the backswing. If we can get that perfect backswing, get that club right into the perfect position at the top, well then all we have to do is just rotate on through. The downswing just happens. Once you get in that great position at the top, you're locked in, you just swing on through, and the downswing happens perfectly. You don't even have to think about it at all. I've heard that, I played that way for a long time, or I tried to play that way for a long time. What if I told you that's completely untrue? There's really almost no truth to that at all. There's a lot of different backswing positions. You see guys that are very flat, like Matt Kuchar, a one plane swing. You see guys that are very upright, Jack Nicholas, Bubba Watson. You see thousands of players that are in the middle that are great, Adam Scott, Tiger Woods. So there's these different swing planes, these different backswing styles. You even see guys like Ryan Moore who have this way outside backswing and then they loop it in. You see guys like JB Holmes who have a very inside backswing. So how is it with all these different backswing angles, all these different planes, how is it that they all seem to play pretty good golf? And the reason for this is the downswing is really what matters. And as you come through contact, that's what's really gonna be the key. I'm gonna give you guys some great tips on that. And we're gonna put this backswing idea to the test. I'm gonna swing with three different planes, one very flat, one in the middle, one at the top, and see what happens. Let's go and get started. So first let's put this to the test. Let's try a few different swing planes and then see the results. So my normal swings plane would be somewhere in the middle. It wouldn't be very flat. It's not super upright. It'd be classified as somewhere in the middle. And let's just get one baseline shot with my normal swing. We'll see the speed and we'll see the distance. There we go. Hit that one pretty well. Going to be a little spinny. Hit it a little thin on the face, maybe Gave it a little bit of a flip there. Not the best drive in the world, but right down the middle of the fairway. So I'll definitely take that one. Now with that one, we're seeing the swing speed was 117, 268 carry. Again, didn't hit it that, that fantastic, 284 total distance. Now let's try out one where I'm swinging a little bit more upright. So let's try maybe a Bubba Watson style. And again, this isn't how I swing. So it's not gonna say that this is the perfect amount or the perfect idea, but I'm really gonna to try to get those hands higher and let's see what happens to those numbers in general. So really high back swing here. Let's see if I can even make contact since this isn't my normal swing shape. There we go, pulled that one a little left. Did not know where the club head was. That was very uncomfortable for me just because that's not my normal swing. We're probably gonna see similar numbers though. So the club head was actually pretty fast on that one. A little bit of extra leverage gave me some more swing speed. Got up to 122, 289 carry, 314 total distance. Now let's also go to more of a flatter style. And let's see if I can get some decent numbers with that. And then we're gonna talk about why I'm doing this, why I'm putting this to the test. And you'll start to know something that's in common with all these swings. So here, I'm gonna try more of a, what to me would feel like a Matt Kuchar, Ben Hogan, type swing plane, very, very flat and around the body. There we go, hit that one pretty solid. A Little too spinny on that one too. But again, we're gonna see similar numbers to what we saw before. So there, club at 114.8, 265 carry, 283 total distance. So what we saw in general was you get a little bit more speed, a little boost in speed as the hands go higher. But in general, both all three of those drives were perfectly acceptable to play some good golf. I think most players between 285 and 314 would be very happy playing golf from there. So what is really happening here, and the key to this is, no matter what your down backswing is, so if I'm very upright, if I'm in the middle or I'm flat, the real key is what we do from there. And what we found that all good players do and the part that we should really focus on is that as we start a downswing, this club should shallow out. When we're talking about coming through contact, there is a swing plane coming through here, which is relatively consistent for all good players. So the swing plane angle is gonna be somewhat consistent and our club is gonna travel through that with most players. That's why your, your irons, the lie angle on your irons, or if I grab a club here, these are fairly consistent throughout most golfers. So this angle between the sole of my club and this club shaft, as I come through contact, this is gonna be flat with the ground. I could take a player like Bubba Watson, who has a very upright backswing, and he's gonna shallow that out some on the downswing. When he comes through contact, the sole of his club, if he has the same specs as most other players, they may need to be a little bit longer because he's a tall guy, 
but this, this, the angle that this club comes in is going to be pretty consistent, and he's going to have a nice flat divot. If I take a guy like Matt Kuchar, who's a very flat player, couldn't be more different than Bubba Watson, he's coming in flat, then he stays on a flatter angle, and he's coming in relatively on the same type of angle or relatively the same kind of lie as a Matt Kuchar. So even though the arms are, let's say, 25 degrees difference, the lie angle doesn't need to change 25 degrees. There's not these big changes in the pros. So if we can get the downswing correct, we can get that club coming through pretty consistently. That's where the consistency in golf lies. That's how you're gonna get the best out of this. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you guys how to do in the rest of this video. Okay, so what is the point here? How do we get that good downswing? How do we get in the slot? So what should be happening here, regardless of wherever your swing plane is? So again, I don't care if your swing plane is really flat, really upright. I think there's pros and cons to each of those, but you can play great golf from any swing plane angle. Where you can't play great golf from is not getting what's the quote unquote slot in the downswing. So if you look at my three different swings, the flat one, the medium one, the high one, all three of those are shallowing out into relatively the same angle uh, to, to, to bring this club pretty well through contact. So what we need to do to do this is as you start your downswing, what you wanna feel is that club shallowing out a little bit. The reason for this is I wanna get this club shallower than where my hands are moving. So if you can imagine my hands start moving down on a plane or an angle, if my club gets below that angle, so if my hands are swinging this way and my club, the, the center of mass or the, the momentum of my club is below that angle, what's gonna wanna happen is that club's gonna wanna kick forward. This face is gonna wanna release under its own momentum. And you can get that nice square ball flight, that nice straight ball flight, without having to try to manipulate this with your hands very much. So whether you're talking the Bubba Watson or the Matt Kuchar, both of those guys at some point in the swing are getting their hand, the club head below their hands, the center of mass of this club below my hands, so that when I continue to swing through, that club head's gonna wanna kick forward and release. And that's the real key takeaway with this. So what I want you guys to feel like, as you go to the top of the swing, I want you to focus on a couple of areas. Number one, you have the logo of your glove here. I want you to feel like as you start down, that logo of the glove starts to face more to the sky. So that logo of the glove is going to turn like you're turning a doorknob to the right. That's going to face more to the sky. My elbow, same thing. If I had a laser shooting out of my elbow, as I start my downswing, that's going to start to shoot more out to the right versus being down. That's going to help to shallow me out. Same thing with the right hand, just in reverse. As I go to the top of the swing, I want to have the palm of my right hand start to open up toward the sky a little bit more. And I want to have my right elbow, instead of shooting out, that would be a steepening move. I want to have that right elbow tuck in. That way my club gets shallower, and now I'm in the slot or a good position to deliver that club through contact. So let's do this to really ingrain this. Number one, I want you to go to the top and pause. So you're gonna pause at the top of the swing, focus for five reps just on that left glove logo. I'm gonna shallow it out, and then I'm gonna swing all the way on through. Don't just shallow it out and stop there. Remember, we're trying to swing all the way through contact, get used to ingraining the motion that the club should be taking through contact. Then we're gonna do five more reps with my left elbow. Get that left elbow to shallow out or point more this way. And then I'm gonna swing all the way on through to a good full finish there. Same two things, five with the right palm, shallow, swing all the way through. Again, finish that swing. Don't quit halfway into your downswing. And then the right elbow, have that one tucked down. And then I'm swinging all the way on through to a good full finish. So over those 20 or so reps, you're giving yourself different keys, different visualizations, and you're gonna find that one of those kind of clicks with you, makes it easier for you. That's gonna be your swing thought as you take this out to the range. So once you get the one that seems to work the best for you or feel the best for you, now we can start to make some swings without any pauses at all. So we're just gonna take about 10 practice swings. Let's say it was the left glove logo. It's coming here, it's turning toward the sky, and then coming through. So let's try that one without any pauses there. Now when I'm comfortable with that, one last thing to remember here, and one of the things that I see a lot of people struggle with is, once we get this club shallowed out, now I can rotate my body on through the shot and I can still come from the inside. So if I'm steep and I rotate my body open, I'm gonna block a mile to the right. If I'm shallow and now I rotate my body on through, now I can get that club to release. I can still get that nice draw, even though I'm opening my body. So we've done the drills. We found the one key that works for you. You've ingrained that a little bit more in practice swings. Now we're ready to hit some shots. Take whatever comfortable swing plane that you have, whether it's steep, flat, anywhere in between, that's fine with me. But we gotta make sure we shallow that club regardless of how we did the backswing. That's gonna get our downswing in the correct 
spot. We're really going to be able to rip it. There we go. Hit that one great right down the middle. Shallow that club, get in the slot. You guys will play some great golf. All right guys, so we talked about shallowing the club in this video, but what do we do with the club face? How do we know if it's gonna be open or closed? What should we do to square this face early and make golf a lot easier? That's what we call the tennis racket drill, and this whole thing is called the move. That's what we teach in the top speed golf system. So shallowing that club, squaring that face early, that way you can just rotate on through there, you let the ball get in the way once you get in that slot, get in that perfect downswing position. I got an awesome preview of a video that's gonna play here in a second. Click the I card or down below the link in the description. You'll get instant access to that. You'll start squaring that face right away in our tennis racket drill. Let's go ahead and get started. Good player problems. We're going to talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it. The flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be... 